from a flightless simulator at Ferris Air to a momentous meeting in an alley to the complex mind of an architect to every far sector in space and to the brilliance of the central power battery on OA. This is the podcast that covers the adventures of all of your favorite ring slingers. This is the Emerald Echo with your hosts, Adam and the Emerald Enthusiast. Welcome to another episode of Emerald Echo, a Green Lantern podcast and vidcast in this case, if you're watching it. I'm your host, Adam. Basically, the Kyle Rayner of the show. And with me, my co host, Johnny, the Emerald Enthusiast himself. Uh, you, you listen, he's done the voice before on his TikTok, so I'm going to call him <laughs> Kyle Rayner. It's not offensive. Okay. Uh, sure. Yeah, that, that's okay. I was going to say, why do you get to be Kyle and I have to be Kyle Walden? Because yeah. I'm younger, that's why. Oh, okay. Hello, Mom. Oh, special guy. Oh, look. Ah, she, oh, she brought you. Show, yeah! I got, I got a black Adam. There it is. <laughs> All right, this so, is the most disjointed, yet the most coolest intro I think we've ever yeah, done. My mom was, I like, made the Nick Fury cameo on the show. Yeah. <laughs> so here's, here's the figure. Yes. You have one of these, so. Yeah, that, I did that review on YouTube. So. I can smell what he's cooking, and I'll just put him up here. <laughs> there you go. What's up, comic book fans? It's the man whose ring runs on fanboy energy. It is the Emerald Enthusiast, and we're back to talk about Green Lantern. Beware my power. You know, before we start talking about Green Lantern, now that I got that figure, mm -hmm. uh, don't be surprised if I end up also getting Hawkman at some point, because... You know, Amazon is a very dangerous place. And uh, <laughs> yeah. when you're browsing and you click, you know, buy for Black Adam, you know, in the also, people also buy and they show you Hawkman, Dr. Finn. I'm like, ooh, that's nice. That's nice. <laughs> so, you know, before this podcast is done, uh, I may, I, I, yeah, I may be uh, adding to the cart because uh, that Hawkman figure is quite, uh, quite, uh, quite nice. And so, but that's not Green Lantern related. Although The Rock could have probably played uh, John Stewart, uh, and if he would have been cast as John Stewart, I would have been okay with that. But uh, the Brahma Bull would have been a construct. But anyway, yeah. that's neither here nor there. Um, right. That would have been cool. So, Donnie, Green Lantern, um, we're back doing another Green Lantern show. The last time we sat down and talked, it was all about Kyle, which we tend to frequently do because. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we've made a pledge to, uh, you know, walk through the journey of Kyle uh, because we, we were, you know, he was our, uh, well, I, I, he probably wasn't your entry point uh, into Green Lantern, but he oh, was mine. Oh, no, I, I was around long before Kyle was around. Yeah, he was mine, so that's why I'm a little biased towards him, uh, and, and that's why I'm all too uh, excited and happy to be uh, going through that. Yeah. But I don't know, want to give it away, by the way. Hopefully, on the next Emerald Echo, on the next Emerald Echo, we will have a special guest. I don't yes, want to give it very, away. Very special guest. Yes, we're gonna have uh, uh, Alex Dewitt on the show. No. Oh boy, a Black Lantern in a refrigerator. <laughs> straight from straight from the, my refrigerator. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> coming to you straight from the refrigerator. Um, <laughs> uh, we're gonna get some hate mail for this. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> but no, so uh, this time uh, they're going to fridge this podcast. Oh boy, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, we're going, <laughs> we're going off the deep end now. No, but um, you know, the last episode wasn't very news heavy. Mm -hmm. Well, that's about to change because <laughs> there we go. It's like Warner Brothers said, you know, let's drop some uh, Green Lantern, uh, you know, DC and Warner Brothers. So let's uh, let's drop some uh, uh, Green Lantern related news so these guys can talk about it. Because they certainly did. Uh, so because we're doing the, the main, the second half of our show will be a review of the uh, latest animated feature, Green Lantern, Beware My Power. So since we're doing a movie in the second half, let's leave the movie news to right before we transition. Okay. And let's start off with the source material, the comic books. Okay. Uh, now, remember a while back when we wrapped up um, issue 12 of uh, Jeffrey Thorne's 
uh, run? Yes. Uh, he couldn't make it on our show. Unfortunately, we couldn't we couldn't coordinate the schedule. Uh, but I got I, the second printing of issue twelve. By the way, it sold out. So oh, yeah, I got the well. I got the first printing and the second printing. So. And how many covers did you get? Just to... well, there was just two. I got them oh. both. Of course you did. Yeah. Uh, but no, when we talked about that, you got a quote from Jeffrey Thorne, hmm? and in regards to what potentially could be next after you know, is there anything else? You know, is this it? Was basically the question we we posed, and he and he said to you, uh, 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 "There are numbers beyond 12. Yeah, we can all count higher than twelve. Yeah, very very like, cryptic. <laughs> yeah, well, I, we, I guess we it's it's technically we're going to thirteen uh, based mm-hmm. on the news that, uh, yeah. that we're going to share because or twelve and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Or, or th- or, well, actually, it's forty eight pages, so thirteen and a half. How about that? Or, or, or just a new number one, um, as both DC and Marvel are wont to do. Yeah. But the gang is back together. Um, uh, Jeffrey Thorne and Marco Santucci are our are, are, are friend and friend of the show because he's been on our show before. Yeah. And hopefully he'll come back uh, uh, to talk about some of the. Speaking of Black Adam, we got to get. Have you been reading those uh, Black Adam movie tie in books? No, not yet. Well, okay, we have to get you to read those so that we can review them and have Marco on the. Okay. We can have Marco and his wife hopefully yeah. on the show because she. I have seen him. some of the art and it's beautiful. Oh. He he draws the the rock perfectly. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, so um, so we'll, we'll we'll deal with that. We'll do that as well. Hopefully, get Marco uh, back on the show. Um, but so he's reuniting with Jeff for. Green Lantern, no, what is it, John's, what's the title of the book? The title of the book is John, Green Lantern, John Stewart, no, wait a minute, hold on, what is the actual title of the book? John Stewart, the Emerald Knight, number one. Yeah, and so, what? what's the premise of this, uh, of this story, uh, Donnie, from what we've heard? Okay, so the description is, John Stewart has been trapped in the dark sectors for months, with the rest of his Green Lantern comrades. Yeah. With the power of the God Storm at his disposal, John's using everything he can to take down Isak the Mad God and bring his fellow corpsmen home. John will need to become something new to win the war against Isak. He'll need to become, drum roll, the Emerald Knight. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so right after issue 12, in between Dark Crisis, which we will also review at some point on the show because there's a big Green Lantern uh, presence that's, involved. That's hitting in November, by the way. Yes. Yeah. As are a lot of things that DC wants to make me go pour over. Um, <laughs> November 29th. So have your turkey, have your Thanksgiving, and buy this as a gift for someone for Christmas. My Thanksgiving is in October, so I've had lots of turkey before. Uh, oh, that's right. Well, right. well, but well yep. before this issue. Is, well, there you go. You'll be having turkey, and I'll be commiserating over the leaves in the meantime. Hey, while you're having turkey, probably, yep. uh, while I'm reading this issue. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, so yeah, I, I'm excited that, that again. Uh, I, if you go back and track our reviews of, of uh, issues one to twelve, uh, and the future state stuff that Jeff did, I'm a fan of his work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I loved what he w- was doing with John Stewart, uh, and. Uh, I said it on the podcast, and I'll reiterate it now, that, you know, I wasn't really a fan of the, the, the two years of Grant Morrison working with Hal Jordan. It just wasn't my cup of tea or coffee because I don't drink much tea. Um, and, um, and so this was a, was, a, was a breath of fresh air and got me excited about Green Lantern again. So... Yeah, to have him continuing his story, at least for now in a one shot, and then hopefully you know more down the line. I, uh, I still think he comes back for another twelve issues. I I don't think this is the end. I I, I would. I mean, if he if if John is going to save his Corman, right? Um, that if he's successful, that naturally would lend itself to more. So, you know. Um, and I think what you, what you may see here is Jeff cleaning up a little bit of the continuity between issue 12 and what we see in 
Dark Crisis. Right. Because there's a lot of things that don't quite add up. He may try to clean a little bit of that up so he can yeah. go forward. But that's just right. me theorizing. You're right. And, and look, and the beauty of the beauty of Dark Crisis is that it's showing us that, you know, in addition to what was going on with John Stewart, the Green the other members of the Green Lantern Corps are still out there doing their thing. So there's nothing stopping DC from saying, "All right, Jeff can continue to do his thing with John Stewart and the Emerald Knight over here, and Green Lantern Corps with you know Hal, Kyle." Kilowog, uh, Joel Mullane, yeah. uh, Simon Jessica, Bass. Jessica Simon, yeah. All those, yeah, all these people can continue in their own Green Lantern Corps book over here. There's nothing stopping DC from making two Green Lantern related books. But, but again, as Green Lantern fans, to ensure that something like that happens, support what's out there. Mm -hmm. And it, again, everything may not be all of our cup of tea or coffee, as I said before. But, you know, I, again, I didn't enjoy Grant Morrison's run on the book. But, Donnie, did you hear me come on here and say, that was terrible, that was crap, that was the... No, right? No, we podcasted on it. You were very objective, and, and I liked it, and we, yeah. you know, gave people two different points of view. But, yeah, but I never say, oh, Grant Morrison... Is a hockey can, right? This and that. Like, it just wasn't for me. I'll, I'll state that I didn't enjoy it, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. You, whatever influence I have with the three people that watch the show, I'm not gonna say. <laughs> you know, don't buy. Don't buy the book. It, it just my opinion, which is singular to me. That didn't work. Whereas Jeff's stuff worked. So, that's you'll never see me dissuade you from buying a book even if I didn't like it. But we have to at least be trying and, and be positive and, and, and encourage others to go out, seek out the Green Lantern card that, that's available, purchase it in the hope of, at the very least, it'll lead to more. And then even if there's something here that I don't like, more will come. And it could be something that I do gravitate towards. So mm -hmm. that's the goal. And the only way we, we're going to have more than one Green Lantern book is if... We, 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 we show some support for what's out there. So that's that's my sort of, I guess, words of wisdom, if you want to call them that. I don't know. The only wisdom I have are my wisdom teeth. So <laughs> I will be. say that the upcoming DC issues, uh, excuse me, deceased, it seems like Kyle is playing a prominent role in that. So I am excited about that. Um. So you're saying we're going to have to review Deceased. We're going to have to Deceased, go back. Deceased, yes. And eventually Jurassic League, too. I'm, I'm digging Jurassic League. And you know, Jurassic we're going to have League. to call it Brooke for that. Brooke Lee for Deceased. We're going to have to okay. get her back. Uh, I, I've been talking with her. She, she wants to come back. She's our cosplay, uh, what do I call her? Cosplay correspondent? Correspondent, yeah. She's uh, been putting in the work, man. She's been oh, doing a she's, lot of cosplays. She's, she's, her Black Canary, I mean, she's done great stuff. Like Everything she does, everything she does is great. Her Black Canary has got to be the best Black Canary cosplay I've ever seen. I really like the American Dream cosplay oh, that she that did. That she, and also, her, her she, hair she, in it. She did yeah. progress shots of her, her Dare, Electra Daredevil. Yeah. Oh, and did I'm you like, see oh, the Daredevil? Oh, man. The one on I'm TikTok? Like, I you know, I'm a Daredevil. You know me. Yeah. The, the only Marvel guy that, that I care about as much as I care about Batman and Superman is Daredevil, and uh, and I can't wait to see whatever like her actual photo shoots with that with that costume. Oh, it's gonna be fantastic! So yeah, I I, I don't understand like how she's not employed as a model of some sort or a spokeswoman somewhere. I, I think Marvel and DC should hire her for cons. Yeah, because she yeah she and got, pay and, her pay her to be at, yeah. at their booth. Yeah. And, and and it's not she's not just another pretty face. She knows her stuff, and she's a good, well-spoken woman too. Yeah, so. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. She's, she's, I she tried knows. to get her to do the other American Dream too, but she wasn't interested. I really wanted to see that. She's not going to put polka dots on, Donnie. <laughs> I just want to hear her say, "On and the fun ain't nothing but a walk behind her. <laughs> the view never changes, baby." <laughs> 
man. Well, as Donny continues to try and pay me <laughs> to get Brooklyn to do a, a, a Dustin uh, a Dusty Rhodes cosplay, um, we will look to schedule her and have her on to not only shoot that down uh, for Donny, <laughs> because I think it needs to be done publicly, uh, uh, like Warner Brothers Discovery has to do with the Snyderverse, but. Um, uh, but we'll get around and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll work out something for deceased. It's been far too long sure. since we've had Brooke on the show, sure. and uh, and uh, I look forward to having her back on. And uh, Brooke, that is our, our, our plug for you, and uh, it's, it's a pleasure for us to do it because you do great work, and you deserve all the accolades. Um, By the way, I'll put her TikTok in the description of this at Tatted Khaleesi because she does. Her, I mean, all of her videos are nice and the, the the photos and things like that. But the stuff she does on TikTok is particularly. You know, the skillful. only negative that I found with Brooke is that she once worked for the Columbus Blue Jackets. <laughs> I mean, what, what are you going to do? Um, people got to earn a living, so really, you know, it is what it is. Uh, people got to eat, baby. You got to put. You gotta... <laughs> you're, on, you're, on the, you're on the. Yeah, you're on the dusty uh, kick today. Uh, all right, so that's the Jeff Thorne Emerald Knight news. Yes. And Donnie and I will, of course, be picking that up. Uh, not only picking it up, we will also be reviewing it. And, uh, you know, the invitation is always there uh, for Jeff Thorne to come and join us uh, and, and talk with us. We had a blast the first time he came on. Uh, and uh, we'd love to have him back uh, if, he, if he wants to. He's more than welcome to uh, uh, to reach out, and we'll try and schedule that. Uh, yeah, and, and make that happen. We know he's a busy man, so uh, but we'd love to have him back. Um, and so that's not the only Green Lantern uh, new related news that we have in terms of uh, the printed page, Donny, because uh, you know we uh, we spent five minutes talking about my my Black Adam action figure. Of course, Black Adam is in a movie coming out October 21st. And in that movie, uh, with Black Adam, is the Justice Society of America. Uh, unfortunately, Alan Scott will not be in that movie, or so we, we, or so we think, from what we know. Uh, however, Alan Scott will be returning with the JSA in a brand new Ongoing series. It's it, it's about time. You and I. How many times did we talk? You know the movie's coming out. <laughs> yeah. JSA. Star Girls on TV. JSA. Where's the JSA book? Give me a JSA book and take my money. We said that countless times on the show. And this is like, oh, money. All right, we'll give you that JSA book. Um, and they are giving us that JSA. By book. the way, and ju just an aside here, I still think there's a chance we see a version of Alan. On Star Girl as well. I hope Don't so. think there's a chance. Uh, I hope so. So um, there is a a new initiative that's going to spin out of the uh, Flashpoint Beyond, which is a current series being written by Jeff jo uh, Jeff Johns, uh, Jeremy Adams, and Tim Sheridan. Um, and that initiative is uh, is called uh, the New Age. The New Golden Age, sorry. Uh, and that's going to comprise of three series. Uh, a one-shot, a mini-series, and an ongoing. Uh, the one-shot is called uh, The New Golden Age number number one, uh, which will unlock epic secret, the ep uh, DC's epic and secret, secret written history of heroism, uh, uh, so basically, um, um, it's going to, uh, all, all three books are going to be written by a modern, a modern legend in the comic industry, in my opinion, and that is Jeff Johns. Uh, there is nothing by Jeff Johns that he, he wrote for DC that I don't like. Okay. Uh, personally, I, I've loved everything. Everything he's written. Um, so there's going to be uh, the next Golden Age number one, and then 
there's going to be a six-issue miniseries, Star Girl: The Lost Children, uh, mm-hmm. which is a six-issue limited series. Uh, I definitely with, want to pick that because it isn't Jade in that. Yeah, I don't know, but I assume so because it says uh, the the description is uh, teenage heroes from the golden age are disappearing left and right. Uh, as discovered by Stargirl and Red Arrow. Mm-hmm. These heroes are apparently being targeted by the distur- disturbingly named uh, Childminder. That's interesting. Uh, okay. So that debuts November 8th, uh, which is written by Jeff Johns, and uh, the art is by Todd... I don't know how to pronounce it. N A U C K. How would you pronounce that? N A U C K. Is it Nalk? That's I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Todd Nalk, I guess. Uh, so uh, if we mispronounce that, apologies. Uh, I always this, say that. Yeah. <laughs> this is why I get Donnie to do the names because if anybody's gonna look like a fool, it ain't me. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Donnie never looks like a fool. Um, uh, uh, and then, and then, Donnie, of course, the aforementioned. Uh, My kids the, would disagree with that, by the way. Well, your kids <laughs> are, are biased towards. Yeah, I mean, you're their dad. Yeah. You're supposed to look foolish to them. Yeah, uh, it's part of the. It's part of the job. Um, That's right. Yeah. Um, so then, they've heard a lot of dad jokes and silly songs over the years. So uh, yeah, and I've heard some of those. Uh, um, some of those um, um, jokes. But in, so, Justice Society of America will be written by John Johns, Jeff Johns, mm-hmm. with art by Michael Janine, who was an artist during the bulk of Tom King's Batman run. Now, now, Donnie, again, see, this is this is what I talked about earlier. I personally did not like most of um, Tom King's Batman run beyond the first 25 issues. Mm-hmm. Okay. One thing I can say about uh, Tom King's Batman run that I loved that was consistently good throughout all 80 some odd issues was the art. And a bulk of that was drawn by Michael Janine. Mm-hmm. And so him teaming up with Jeff Johns on uh, JSA uh, is uh, phenomenal. It's a great pairing. And I know this is Greenland centric, so Alan Scott will be part of the team, as will Hawkman, as will uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Flash, Golden Age Flash, mm-hmm. uh, Jay Garrick. Yeah, yeah Jay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I was going to say John Wesley Ship, but it's not. <laughs> like, it's not like he is the Flash, but you know. Close. <laughs> uh, um, hashtag John Wesley Ship Flash. That's how. That's how it works, right? Um, no, um, and there's also, but the cool thing for me, aside from those characters, which should be there because they're, they're, they're core JSA members, is that this book is apparently bringing back the Golden Age Huntress, Helena Wayne, which is the daughter of my boy, Batman, and Calvin. And and contrary to what history of this podcast will dictate, I actually like that pairing. I just don't like it when some fool is constantly saying bad cat forever from the first kiss to the last when we're talking about something that doesn't involve Batman and Catwoman. And that fool is not Donnie. Uh, Uh I'm going to change my, my Twitter name to that, though. <laughs> Bad Cat Forever. <laughs> Listen, this individual that I'm, I'm, I'm loosely speaking of wanted to change his legal name 
to Kyle Wayne, like his last name. So it shows you how out of touch with reality he was. Uh, but I digress. Uh, like I said, folks, it, it takes a while. You got to feel it out when you when you deal when you're dealing with co-hosts. Sometimes you got to feel it out and find. You know, it takes a while to find a couple of sane ones. Uh, uh, I finally found them in uh, Donnie and uh, and Chris, uh, who you see on the regular here. Um, so I am trying to get one of my kids to name a grandkid eventually Kyle, but you know. okay, but that's. <laughs> Kyle is a reasonable name. Yeah. Imagine interviewing somebody for a job with the last name Kyle Wayne. I mean, At least he didn't change it to Bad Cat Forever. Like, I thought that's what you get ready to say. Listen, listen. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him, man. I really wouldn't. But anyway, so, a lot, I mean, I'm excited for this JSA. Uh, the whole, this whole new age. And, you know, Jeff, uh, again, like, our any... Jeff Johns doing something at DC is an automatic buy for me. Like, for example, I hope he never does it because then I have to buy it. But, you know, I don't like the Metal Men. I, as a concept, I think they're ridiculous. Oh, I like the Metal Men, but that, that's, okay. yeah. Different podcasts. Different strokes, different folks. Yeah. Uh, for different folks and all that jazz. But, now the world don't move. Yeah, yeah. That's different strokes. But, but, yeah, exactly. But, but regardless, if Jeff Johns announced that he was doing that I'd read it damn it so hopefully he never does because yeah. I could save myself four dollars but uh, well I hope this book does well and oh, you know let's yeah. you know without delving into this some people we know Jeff Johns is kind of kind of controversial whether you like him or not who cares just buy the book listen, listen. support DC I'm just gonna say this flat out there were investigations into a certain actors claims nothing was found and I refuse to believe that a person who created um, Simon Bass and who promoted uh, Cyborg to the Justice League uh, is negative towards uh, certain races I, I refuse to believe that so regardless of what a uh, disgruntled, largely unemployed actor uh, says, uh, "I'm I enjoy the works of Jeff Johns, and I will continue to read them as they're put out. And I will be uh, at the comic store purchasing all three of these titles when they release throughout the month of November. Uh, and uh, I'm excited. The JSA deserves the spotlight it's apparently getting." And uh, curse my wallet's going to be hurting in November yeah. because because uh, my wallet is yeah I got a lot of very covers hero. on the way. My wallet is crying out for a hero, and it's not the ones in the pages because that's where the money's going. But um, we need a hero. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so a lot of exciting uh, comic book news to look forward to, uh, or comic books to read. Sorry, mm -hmm. but a lot of exciting news to discuss now. Over to the live action side of the equation regarding. Okay. The there has been a lot of concern, panic in in DC fan areas because Warner Brothers Discovery, under the leadership of David Zaslav, uh, unfortunately uh, canceled the Batgirl film. Mm -hmm. uh, I was looking forward to that because uh, I like Batgirl and it had Michael Keaton's Batman in it so I was really looking forward to that but right. business decisions are what business decisions are and unfortunately that's not happening but when that happened DC fans went into panic mode because that's seemingly all we know how to do uh, and assumed that well he cancelled Batgirl and it was nearly completed. So that means he's going to cancel everything else that isn't on the verge of release. Uh, and we were hearing uh, Twitter experts and, and scoopers and, oh, well, the, the, the Penguin is in danger and the Green Lantern HBO Max series is in danger and this is in danger and that is in danger and, it, and he's going to you know, cancel even stuff 
that he's not involved with, but, the, but his axe is going to reach uh, levels that are unheard of. So all kinds of nonsense was coming on. Mm -hmm. But as of from between August 15th to as recent as this past Thursday, which was the 18th, okay, we have reports from The Hollywood Reporter, Variety, Deadline, which are the major Hollywood traits, saying that three HBO Max projects moving forward from the DC brand are Peacemaker Season 2, which did incredibly well the first season. The Penguin uh, series, the Batman spinoff starring Colin Farrell and Green Lantern from Greg Berlanti are all moving forward. Not only did the Hollywood Reporter and TV line say that, they, they printed a memo from Casey Bloys, who is the head of HBO Max. Basically, he was outlining the responsibility of, the, of certain executives, right? Mm -hmm. And he outlined the responsibility of one executive. I can't remember her name. But she's responsible for those three shows. Peacemaker, The Penguin, and Green Lantern. Folks, if it's in a memo to the company, from the head of the company, as of August 18th, telling you that Green Lantern, the show is happening, as of right now, take it at face value that it's happening. Like, here's the problem, Donnie. There's so much BS on the internet, like anybody can print anything and call it an article or a scoop, that, that we've now lost the ability to believe actual legitimate pieces of news. Sure, hypothetically, could things fall apart and things don't happen? That's It's Hollywood. That's always a possibility. Well, a, a lot of the rumors that were going around were based on supposition. We didn't have like anyone from Discovery coming out and saying, yeah, we're definitely not going to do this. Now, you know, I as a Green Lantern fan, I've been burned a lot. So am I convinced there might, you know, there might be a delay, things might change, but I never saw anything to lead me to believe yeah, it's definitely gone. It was just a lot of people, you know, taking what happened to Batgirl and yeah. kind of projecting that onto Green Lantern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They projected it onto everything. And also, they recently filed a, trade, a bunch of trademark uh, information that basically listed that Green Lantern was scheduled for release at some point in 2024. Yeah, I saw that. So, so like... Yeah. The evidence is mounting towards that, yes, it's happening. You know, the, 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 and the, 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 again, all the producers have talked about, you know, the pandemic slowed us down. It caused it, as it did with a lot of Hollywood productions. And you've got to understand the scope of this series. Right? Right, it's, it's massive, it's the, yeah. It's the biggest thing Greg Berlanti has ever produced. And, and I've said this before, I I still think that the Green Lantern Corps is better suited to a series than movies. Yeah. Not that I don't want to see them in movies, but there are so many characters. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. the backdrop of the story is so massive that you need more than a couple of hours. So, so folks, you know, like, like look, I know there was a report in Production Weekly that said, it was scheduled to start filming September 5th. Do I believe that's going to happen? No, that's probably been delayed. But do I think by the end of the year, early into, you know, the January, February time months that it will start? Yeah, I believe that. Uh, so, so, you know, like, like, let's learn to, as of right now, as of August 18th, the project is still a goal. And th th that's the fact we have. Let's, let's take the facts. And again, I understand being cautious, but 
you know, HBO, Ma HBO and HBO Max still have to function. Mm -hmm. Zaslav can't cancel everything. And he clearly wants to put the, uh, an emphasis on DC. And um, again, it's unfortunate about Batgirl. I was right. really looking forward to that. But that doesn't mean that everything at DC Entertainment is going to be canceled. In, in fact, I think we're, we're about to see kind of a new age of DC things. And that, and by no means am I criticizing like CW or the Arrowverse yeah, or yeah. whatever, the related shows. But we're seeing a lot of those shows come to an end. And I think we're ready to see, you know, DC presented to us in a new way as opposed to like the previous few years. You know, if anything, Donnie, you know, what could have happened here, what we're looking at is potentially, what if like the last couple of scripts have been reworked to sort of be able to integrate them into the new shared universe part of the 10-year plan. Like, maybe that's a case of, of what happened. Maybe they're like, okay, you know, that was the old way we're going to do it, but now we're going to integrate a little bit more, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, again, but by and large, you know, uh, something of this size <laughs> takes time. And, again, with Green Lantern, you want to put the best uh, product out there because we've already had a version in live action that didn't hit enough people in the right way. Unfortunately, yeah. and this is not bias; it's just fact, and I think you can you can you can support me in this, Donnie. Green Lantern doesn't have the luxury of multiple failures. How dare you? Of course not. It does. <laughs> Batman, and, Batman and Superman can, and and they'll they'll be re, you know, they'll be re, they'll maybe be benched for a little while, but then they'll be re repackaged and brought in a different way. If Green they Lantern have to make sure that this time the way Green Lantern is presented, that it makes an impression on people. Yeah. yeah. More so than just being another Hollywood blockbuster, they've got to make sure that it's differentiated. And that it is looked at favorably and unique. Yeah, yeah. We, like, as Green Lantern fans, regardless of who is at this, whichever whichever ring bearer or bearers we're dealing with, at the at the end of the day, if you're if you are legitimately a Green Lantern fan at heart, you want the best product of it uh, that they could possibly put out. And regardless of who's at the center of it, you want it to succeed because success will breed more. Mm -hmm. So as much as we want everything Real Lantern related yesterday, understand that it takes time. It's looking like 2024. So strap in and be patient. But as of August 18th, Several official sources tell us that this is still a goal, despite the merger. We're putting the pieces together, and we're going to get this right, or we're going to try to get this right. Take that as a positive, and let's go from there. Yeah. Try to stay upbeat. It's going to be okay. Don't, don't believe every you high you see. And again, we're on YouTube, so you can, you can, say, you can say that about us. Don't believe every you ha that you believe on YouTube that's getting their so that's getting their information from 4chan or a message board or some goof called Sil Abdul who has no sources or this and that or Mikey Sun. These guys are all are all grifters who have no idea what they're talking about. And all you're gonna do is scroll down their pages and you'll see a bunch of hashtags and you'll know that they that, 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 that they have a specific agenda and they want everything canceled for the restoration of something else. Don't believe nonsense like that. You got, nine times out of ten, the Hollywood trade isn't lying to you. And look, Deadline got the Henry Cavill thing wrong. Mm -hmm. But to be fair, that wasn't an official report. And if you learned to read between the lines, you would have known that, and you wouldn't have got your hopes up. But the, 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 the sources that, I'm, that Donnie and I are telling you about, when it was reported, the wording of it was very, 
matter of fact and official. It wasn't, oh, there's, there's buzz. You know, when they say there's buzz, that could mean we're, 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 we're seeing hashtags on Twitter. There's buzz. When they're telling us sources at HBO Max are, are saying that this, this, and this are happening, that's official. And Hollywood Reporter is usually the mouthpiece of Warner Brothers. Like, when Warner Brothers wants something out, they'll send it to the Hollywood Reporter or leak it to the Hollywood Reporter. So if you're seeing it in Hollywood Reporter, chances are it's come from the horse's mouth. And by the way, I also saw people who were forecasting the death of DC Comics. They, they were saying that Zaslav oh, was going to shut down. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen any evidence for that. You, you talk about recently? Yes, there were people who were saying that he was going to shut down DC Comics. Okay, but uh, folks, do you understand that DC, to, to a businessman, forget about us being fans, to a businessman like, like David Zaslav, you look at DC and the IP that they have, that's that's a that's an idea factory for movies and television that can make you money. Why would he shut it down? Yeah, with with Especially, a lot of talent to write. And by the way, comics are selling better now than they have in years. Last year, comic sales were through the roof. Especially Donnie, he 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 he, he singled out at their latest earnings call. That's when he came up with the whole "we're making a ten-year plan." We're, de we're dedicating an entire team solely to DC properties. Why would he cancel the source of those IPs? It doesn't make sense. So learn just to, to, to not instantly react with panic. Learn to think with a little bit of logic. When, 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 when you're searching for information, just, just discern a little bit and say, this sounds like if it looks... Sounds and smells like BS. Chances are it's BS. Nine times out of ten. It's good. Hey, look, sure. One, one time out of ten when you throw BS against the wall, it might stick, right? But nine out of ten. That's a visual gonna, right there, buddy. <laughs> it's going to fall to the ground. You know, a monkey's going to pick it out of his rear end, throw it, and it's going to fall to the ground. You know, so let's let's discern. Let's be a little bit more discerning and, and, and rational when we when we look at this news. So, but what we what Donnie and I have presented are from official sources. So, understandably, be cautious, be patient, but also get excited because I think there's good. There's definitely good things coming from the comics. And I believe there's good things coming for Green Lantern fans on the live action front as well. But until that time, we're going to take a break. And on the other side of that break, we're going to come back and review Green Lantern. You were my pop. Don't go anywhere. I'm your host, Adam. And I'm the Emerald Enthusiast. And for all your multiverse viewing and listening needs, check out our shows. That includes Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Ghostbusters, Masters of the Universe, the Marvel Universe, and the DC Comics Universe, including the Emerald Echo Podcast. All right here on YouTube and Podbean. From the first podcast and vidcast to the last. And we're back! Indeed we are. And uh, back on uh, in an animated movie hmm? is Green Lantern. But for the first time in a long time, the Green Lantern getting the spotlight in one of these animated features is John Stewart. Mm -hmm. So, Donnie, beware my power. For a long time, we didn't know what it was. All we knew was the title. Yeah. We got it at Fandom, and that's the only thing that we got was the title. Yeah. And uh, turns out that we are, it, it was, in fact, a, a, a John Stewart Green Lantern starring vehicle. And, mm -hmm. 
And um, overall, I really enjoyed myself with this. Likewise. Um, l- let me just say one thing before we start here. I think a lot of people set themselves up to not like this because if you're a fan of just one lantern or a fan of a certain era, you're not going to get that going into the tomorrow verse. Even if you like John Stewart, you're not going to get a classic John Stewart here because if you saw man of tomorrow, you knew that this is a very different continuity for DC. Very different. And so they're going to pick and choose and they're going to use a lot of different stories and and points to their continuity to make what they want. So if you go in with the attitude of this is an else world story, this is not, you know, a, a beat for beat adaptation of the comics, then you're going to have a lot greater chance of enjoying this movie and future tomorrow verse movies. Right. And also, I'll just echo your sentiments. Like, you know, we talked about it. Kyle is our personal favorite. Mm -hmm. But by and large, I enjoy all the lanterns to varying degrees because I like the mythology. Mm -hmm. And each one brings something different to the table. I say that all the time. There's but, there's so much that they bring that's different. But you know, to the Hal Jordan fans who are upset that Hal Jordan's not the star of this thing, Hal Jordan's been the star of most of the DC animated films. Like there was First Flight, mm-hmm. Emerald Knights, right. New Frontier. Uh, Justice League War. Yeah. yeah. So it's like... John eventually came into that continuity, but it was it was Hal at first. Yeah, right. So, you know, we just rolled off six titles. As well as the animated series. Yeah, and he had his own, one, unfortunately, only one season, but one season of the animated series. So it's not like... Hal's disappeared off the face of the earth for the last 10 years in terms of uh, you know uh, use in, in comics and other media so like you know like it's okay if other legends get the spotlight and as a Kyle fan would I like to see Kyle Rayner get his own you know it would, would I like to see them do a a full-on adaption of, of when he got the ring and, and his first few adventures? Of course I would. But I'm not going to yell and scream into the void because that hasn't happened. You know? So, and and regarding to your, your point about picking and choosing and mixing and matching, and mm-hmm. that's what the live-action features do too. Christopher Nolan's entire Batman trilogy was a mixing and matching of different storylines. And, and that's what this did. And I, you should have known that from the trailer. Yeah. Obviously, the fact John wasn't a Green Lantern, and yet we have Sinestro in a version of his Sinestro Corps uniform. Yeah. And so, beauty, obviously, very yeah. different eras there. And the beauty of the fact that they have pick and choose, right, mm-hmm. is that, okay, sure, John Stewart is the Green Lantern that's being focused on in the Tomorrowverse, right? That doesn't mean that, that DC... For anime, now. Yeah. For now. But, but what that doesn't mean, it, even if he stays that way, right? It doesn't mean that at the same time, DC Animation can't greenlight a separate set of films, which they often do outside of the shared universe, you know, adapting Jeff Johns's Green Lantern run in in multiple films. There's nothing saying they can't do that. Like, they're not prevented from doing that. Like, you know, like, for example, we've gotten Batman the Long Halloween, right? Mm -hmm. In the Tomorrowverse. 
We've also gotten Batman uh, Gotham by Gaslight. We also got Batman Hush. We also got, you know, uh, uh, any other Batman story. So, uh, oh, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Returns, right? We got a, a straight adaptation of that. So, while all that other shared universe stuff was going on, the not connected but straight adaptations of the storylines were also able to be produced. So, just because we're seeing John here doesn't, and they're mixing and matching certain storylines, doesn't preclude them from taking that route as well. So, just that. Yeah. But, and at the same time, there is a lot of John Stewart flavor here. Now, yeah. his origin is different here, but we still see an early skirmish with John saving a man who is going to be yeah. set on fire. Yeah. Yeah. And the police show up and immediately assume John is the one starting the fight. And so, you know, he confronts the police, much like we saw in Green Lantern, Green Arrow, number 87 in 1971 where, you know, John had a problem with the police. This version's much more stoic than, you know, the younger, fire, you know, more fiery version that he was originally. Right. But we still get that flavor as part of this overall blended story. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So even though we're getting different elements, I think the core essential elements of John Stewart are present mm -hmm. here. And that's really all, all you can ask for, I think. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, you know, they wanted to highlight, you know, John Stewart came from, you know, a place of um, Dennis O'Neill and Neil Adams kind of looking at racial injustice. And so they made sure that that was there in the beginning, even yeah. before they started with the space stuff. Yeah. So we also see that John is suffering from PSD in this. Yeah. And on, on my YouTube channel, I, I actually cautioned parents about letting young kids see this, I really don't think this is for young children because, you know, not only do we have a lot of really adult themes you, you see in a couple of different places, like John gets stabbed through the hand. There's several bloody deaths. They deal with some very weighty, dark subjects here. I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. I would agree with that, that warning. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing that I want to say too, a lot of Kyle fans, said, oh, because it's Emerald Twilight, they just ripped Kyle's Kyle's origin and gave it to John. Okay. Yes, there are similarities. And obviously, we'll, we'll get to Emerald Twilight in, in a minute. But we also see that the Guardians were aware of John, much like we saw at Green Lantern Volume 2, number 87, and Secret Origin, number 9, mm. in 2015. Okay. Remember when Ganthet gave Kyle the ring, he said, you will have to do. Initially, he just said, you'll have to do. Later on, he shows up in Ganthet's tale and says, oh, yeah, I just chose you by chance. Right. In this, they obviously know who John is. Yeah. So I still think they kept the spirit, even though they're adapting Emerald Twilight to a degree, yeah. they still kept the spirit of John being special and under the observation of the Guardians. Agreed. 100% agreed, yeah. So we see Ganthet, by the way, and he doesn't actually call him Ganthet in the movie, but I double-checked at the very end, and Ganthet is credited. Ganthet flies to Earth to find John, and just before uh, he, 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 he actually disintegrates just after talking to John, and then we see John get the ring that is in Ganthet's robes. Mm -hmm. And... It forces its way onto John's finger, and obviously this is a departure from the, the other John Stewart origins because it forces its way onto John's finger, and John really is not cool with this. He's like, what is going on here? Right. Yeah. Which is a natural reaction. I mean, if, right. you, if a ring is levitating and forcing itself onto your finger, you'd be like, what? Yeah. Wait a minute. Something's off about this. <laughs> yeah. My 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 favorite humorous moment was when he told the ring to go pound sand, and he created that giant hammer and actually pounded the sand. <laughs> right, yeah, that was funny. I like yeah. that. <laughs> By the way, I think the animation was outstanding here. Oh, I love I, the animation. I like style. how you know yeah. slick and fluid it is. Yeah, I agree. I like this Tomorrowverse animation. It's great. 
And speaking of, so uh, the Watchtower scene where we first see the Watchtower and outer space outside of Earth, beautiful. Because John is flown to the Watchtower by the ring because he's like, you know, I've got to get to someone. I've got to get to someone who's going to tell me what to do with this ring. Right. And that is Green Arrow. By the way, I really think that Aldous Hodge did a spectacular job as John. I agree. The voice His was perfect. voice yeah. work was great. Yeah. And that's, and again, that's difficult to do because we have a certain person in our head. Philomar. Philomar. Philomar, yeah. So yeah. when I read Green Lantern, John Stewart, Philomar comes into my head. So it's, it, you know, you have that bias, but I think Aldous Hodge uh, acquitted himself very well, and and uh, it's funny because he plays Hawkman in uh, Black Adam. Mm -hmm. So his abbreviated, you know, his amalgamated, as the teen kids like to do nowadays, <laughs> name would be Hawk Lantern, I guess. Right. <laughs> um, which can you imagine his Hawkman and his John Stewart having a. Uh, sort of altercation over uh, the affections of Hot, hot Girl. That, that I mean, would be either way, either way, Aldous Hodge wins. Cause, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, okay, now, before I go forward, I'm not going to sit here and say everything Green Lantern is perfect. You're there not? Are not, yeah, believe um, it or not, I don't, I don't like everything. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm holding on to my chair for this one. <laughs> I... I have said that I don't think that the inclusion here of Green Arrow was the best decision. And it's not that I, I uh, by the way, I love the, you know, the inclusion of, you know, Green Arrow in volume two of Green Lantern. I think that works in, in a lot of different ways. But this was a space-based story right. with really big cosmic threats. Right. And I thought that the Flash would have been a better inclusion here than Green Arrow. That's understandable. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Just now, like, I, I, like, I wouldn't want Batman in the story. Yeah, right. So, so, but an, another area that I want to talk that I thought that I want to talk about that I thought they made the proper decision was avoiding the whole love interest thing. Because we had, there was Vixen as well as Shira, obviously <laughs> from the Justice League show. We know that those were John's <laughs> love interests there. I didn't want this to be bogged down with a love story. I just didn't think it needed it. I'm not saying that they can't do that with John later on. Yeah, they can do it in the future. <clears throat> yeah. But that's one of the mistakes that I thought the 2011 live action Green Lantern movie made is they were like, oh, we have to give Hal Jordan a girlfriend. Well, Hal Jordan fitting into the core and learning to adjust to, you know, life as a Green Lantern out in outer space, that's enough of a story in and of itself. That's what makes yeah. Green Lantern different. And we saw that with First Flight, where, you know, uh, Carol shows up at the very beginning, and then Hal goes to space, and the only other mention of her is at the very end of the movie. Right. Uh, so I you, think they, they don't need to have that every single time there's a Green Lantern origin. I think you could see very little... Uh, in very small doses, the, the, the start of potential romantic, you know, uh, feelings between those two. Like, there was a little bit of... Yeah, hot girls was, developed respect for him, yeah, and that's fine. Certain, but even you see a certain, you know, certain glances between the two. You, it's, they're, they're kind of, you could see them planting the seeds, but it didn't need to be more than that. And, and, and I'm yeah. glad they kind of yeah. Tempered that. Yeah. And, and and that only makes sense because Hawk Girl, obviously, throughout the entire movie, she seemed like she had had about 15 Red Bulls. That's what I said on my YouTube channel, is that she reminded me of the way Sid Vicious used to do promos. Oh, yeah. What are you trying to say, little man? Like, every time somebody asks her a question, what are you trying to say? It's the Randians. Ah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I really, I really liked it. She eventually got to be a little bit more logical in the way she yeah, looked yeah. at things, but she was all, you know, she was very but like she's hyped a warrior, up. So her first instinct would be 
you know. Yeah. Anything she does, I got to spring into action because yeah, that's what I do, right? Act first, think think yeah. second, and eventually, you know, as she's operating with this group, she starts to calm down a little bit. Yeah, and, and realize that not everything is as it seems in the beginning of the movie. So, right, right, right. yeah. So again, we talked about Emerald Twilight already. There's also strong influence here from Zero Hour and Ran Thanagar War, and they may not be, have been fused perfectly, but I think they did. Uh, they were put together in a way that made them all work toward the ultimate goal of the movie. It worked well enough, yeah. And I thought it was cool because I like the Rand Thanagar War storyline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And when, realistically, when are we ever going to get that fully done in, you know, in the truest sense of the word? Probably not. Ne probably never. Yeah. Right? So to have elements of it sprinkled in here, I thought was very cool. It, it They did form a cohesive narrative. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So anyway... Really if you can do that in a movie, that's 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 a positive. Sure. Because movie making is difficult, and you know, doesn't always work. And, and especially when you're talking about something like Green Lantern that has such a rich history, right. and when you start pulling in things like Ranthanagar War, yeah, uh, very difficult. So yeah. anyway, at this point, John is uh, transported to Oa here, and we see that. Among other, it's a bloodbath, by the way. Oa's been attacked. We see the bodies of Tomar Ray, Crayon, uh, Boudica, Salak, Kihan. Uh, and at this point, you know. Was this John, directed by Zack Snyder? It was a bloodbath. <laughs> right. Dead lanterns. That's, that's, that's uh, Zack Snyder's specialty. Right, exactly. Uh, but, you know, John starts to see this, and we get the call back to earlier on in the movie where his PTSD. Is right. something that he's wrestling with every time he sees something like this. Right. Because, you know, he's seen a lot of death in the military. And we also see that he had a near-death experience himself and, I, and himself. And I don't mean that, like, he left his body or whatever, but he was nearly stabbed through the chest. Yeah. So, and that was a cool... Uh, to see that part of his military past and that, those experiences, as jarring as it was from, oh, wow, they're, they're, really, go like, they're really going for it. It was is really really interesting to see because again it 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 takes what we're seeing in a in a, in a, in a fantastical scenario, you know, sci-fi fan, fantasy kind of scenario, and it grounds it into a real real life real world scenario. You can imagine the soldiers that are overseas, the, all of the the. The insanity and the, and, the, and the disturbing things that they that they have to witness. So, so you, you can respect that and relate to that on some level. Well, and so we just talked about about Hawk Girl showing up and again being kind of enraged and not easy to speak with. Not knowing John again, this is a different continuity. So she didn't know who he was. <clears throat> When she goes to Oa and there's all this carnage around with the lanterns, she thinks that John and Oliver are responsible for this. So she immediately attacks John. Right. And then we see John fight back with the ring, and he makes this giant vehicle construct and nearly crushes her to death. And I really like that story point here. The ring, you know, telling John lethal force is not authorized. Lethal force is not authorized. And, like, trying to, like, bring John to, like, you know, the, the reality of what he was doing. Because, he, you know, he had her to a point to where she was about to pass out. And he was crushing her with that construct. And I like that, that it was, that it's the ring saying, you know, Greenlanders don't do that. Right. And that, you know, that was a major story point in, in uh, Volume 4 when there was... You know the 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 ever escalating war between the Green Lanterns and the Sinestro Corps yeah. is you know should they revert to using lethal force too? Right. So anyway, later on we see Green Arrow teach John the oath, which initially he calls it hokey, but hearing Aldous Hodge speak the oath, every time I hear the oath, I get excited. L well, maybe, maybe not with the Daffy Duck. Maybe you heard it here first. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,
At Maybe not with the Daffy Duck version. At but the I'm, bar, if you want to get Don and Donnie's attention, just whisper the oath in his ear. <laughs> <laughs> you would not believe how many times I'm doing a heavy set at the very end of a workout, and I don't have any in, in any energy, and I speak the oath to myself. Oh, that's not shocking to me at all. <laughs> Give myself a little bit of oomph. That's you know? not shocking to me at all. That's, I expect that. If you don't do that, I'd be disappointed in you. It, the, the oath is galvanizing every time I hear it. So... We also see the first part of how Jordan's fate, uh, he shows up in this, and we see that he is seemingly killed trying to stop an out-of-control Zeta Beam. Adam Strange appears via a Zeta Beam, and of course, Hot Girl, understandably, is mistrustful of him at right. this point. Yeah. Because of the, you know, Ryan Thanagarian War. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Now, as things go on, John still wants to give up the ring. You see that probably three quarters of the way through the movie. He just wants to be rid of it because it's too much of a weird experience for him. I didn't sign up for this, yeah. Right. In fact, when he put the ring on, he was like, you know, uh, and listening to the ring talk to him, he's like, I'm going to take whatever meds the VA gives me from now on, you know, because he, he, you know, he just can't quite wrap his mind around all of this being thrown at him at right. once. Uh -huh. and that's a real reaction that I think somebody would have. Like, if they're hearing voices from a ring, they're like, man, I need some meds because I'm going <laughs> right. nuts. Right. You know, like, so, yeah. So, eventually, the group pieces together that an outside perpetrator is attacking key targets to escalate the war between Thanagar and Ran. Yeah. So, that's what we start to see as the pieces fall into place. That there is someone, you know, moving, you know, the 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 Ranian pieces and the Thanagarian pieces around to escalate the war. So the group is then attacked by a very familiar face, and that is Sinestro. Shocking. And shocking, right. <laughs> I actually didn't expect this before the trailers, I didn't expect to see him. Well, you and and you definitely see a little bit of you know the Sinestro Core War influence here, not as much as the other stories that I talked about, but he's in a version of his uniform. He's with Lisa Drack, who actually has on the uh, and you're looking at that that figure again. You just can't keep your eyes on. It. <laughs> no, because like he's got his health tilted, and it's like the Rock is looking at me. It's the weirdest thing in the world. <laughs> You know, a good figure will do that to you, I gotta say. Anyway, but, uh, <laughs> so, Sinestro is with a bunch of villains. They're not necessarily his core, because we see later on that actually he's not in control, but yeah. he's commanding this these villains, and we see Kanjaro, Lord Damon, and Despero. And those aren't villains that usually work together, but they're here in this in this particular continuity. It's like the Survivor Series. You get a mix and match of people. That's a good point. You know, Survivor Series. And I have to put yeah. a wrestling reference in there. <laughs> so, Sinestro and his group, and I call them the Sinestro Collective in my YouTube video. All right, yeah. Uh, so, point. yeah, he imprisons the heroes, and John is stripped of his ring at this point. But Sinestro has another prisoner, or so we think, and that is none other than Hal Jordan. That was a, that was a shocking twist to, to see him there. I'm like, oh, he's alive. This will make Hal Jordan fans happy because when we saw the flashback where he was dead, I'm like, oh, this is going to piss people off. Well, yeah, the trailer led us to believe that he was dead. No, well, the sad fact is that I'm that I'm telegraphing. We've gone to a place where we can't watch a movie and just enjoy it for what it is. Mm -hmm. Like in the back of our heads, because we, we, we're, we're involved in the fan experience, we, we, can, we can see a moment and be like, oh, that's going to piss off a bunch of people. That's <laughs> I miss the days where I can just watch something and go, oh, cool. <laughs> so as time goes on, you know, uh, Hal Jordan is interacting with the group and Green Arrow starts to realize, and they, they do escape, obviously, that Hal is acting in a more sinister manner, a more calculating manner than Oliver remembers. And he starts to wonder what's going on here. And we see that 
something fundamental has changed with Hal Jordan. Right. He was definitely more, more visceral, more violent. Mm -hmm. So we get the rest of his story from another flashback, and that is that he was injured by the Zeta Beam and defeated, and he surrendered his ring to avoid it falling into the hands of Sinestro, who was actually at the test of the Zeta Beam. Mm. Now, I also didn't like this story point. I'm not a fan of Green Lanterns like having their rings taken and someone else being able to use them unless they will it that way. You know, we've, right. we've seen how Jordan in the comics, you know, give his ring to somebody else like Barry Allen and say, you know, my ring, my rules, you, you use this, you know, yeah. to the best of your ability. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But this idea that a green lantern can be stripped of their ring and somebody else can use it. I never liked that to me. It doesn't make, doesn't make sense. Sure. Yeah. I, I, I found it to be a little weird as well. Right. So like, wait, doesn't it choose the user? How can right? How can it work for you know random? Right, and you know Sinestro at this point obviously has been discharged from the Green Lantern Corps. He's wearing a yellow ring, so why would it work for him? Yeah, it should say yeah, no way, buddy. We're not, we're not, we're not listening to you. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> so Sinestro infects Hal Jordan with a much smaller version of the parallax entity than we're used to seeing in the comics because that was you know, a disturbing the, visual though yes it was and by the way somebody edited that and i saw some pictures online in a very as if it wasn't disturbing enough they edited it in another disturbing way but i'm i'm gonna leave that anyway I, 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 just based off your description i'm like yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, you know, people on Twitter have too much time on their hands. It is what I think it is, and yeah. I don't yeah. want to see that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, I really could have done without this. But anyway, yeah. so at this point, again, Hal's defenseless. Because he doesn't have his ring, he's infected by Parallax. And he and Hal attack Oa. Hal Jordan is naked at this point, by the way. I could have done without that. I realize there are probably a lot of fans who watch this both female and male, who will disagree with me. That's okay. It's, That's fine, I just yeah. I could have done without it. I, you know, I you know really don't want to start seeing a bunch of naked superheroes, but that's just me. Anyway. I'm with so, you. Yeah. <laughs> so they invade Oa, and they bring about its destruction. And that's where we see, you know, all the lanterns who were killed, you know, earlier on in the movie. You know, that's this is how that happened was Hal and Sinestro invading Oa. Right. So at this point, Hal gathers ten rings from the fallen lanterns. Now, I don't have a problem with that because I obviously liked Emerald Twilight. I love the the iconic yeah, the Daryl image, Banks yeah. cover. Yeah, I love it. You but, love Daryl Banks cover, really? I mean, the sharks keep coming on this show. Yeah, imagine that. But I will say that the story's a little messy here because really with the battery down, with Oa in distress, the ring shouldn't have worked at that point. Yeah. And how is Hal Jordan being inhabited by Parallax how is he operating Green Lantern rings? Two different types of energy. Yeah. But nonetheless, they do work for him, and he is able to overpower Sinestro. By the way, I really did like the visual of how getting the rings and Sinestro, at first, he was just like, oh, yes, you know, here's another, you know, uh, 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 another avenue of power. And then all of a sudden he realizes, wait a minute. I'm I'm about to be overpowered here, and Hal yeah, does screwed. turn the yeah he turns the tables on Sinestro. It's kind of like when the Undertaker saw Paul Bear with the urn, and uh, you know he was reaching for Paul Bear, and then Paul Bear cracks him over the head, right with a <laughs> and then goes with mankind. Yeah, that was, that was yeah. kind of like that. Oh, those were good times back then. Oh, uh, good old days. Yeah. <laughs> and the urn is gold, yellow, so it's you see, yeah. <laughs> it, all, it all fits. It's all connected, Donnie. <laughs> One of the things I want to say here, too, is that when we see John using the ring and the other lanterns using their rings, I really like how 
the energy looked vibrant. It was healthy looking and strong looking. When we finally see Hal as Parallax, he looks diseased. Yeah. Which is a good way to kind of, you know, illustrate that about what's happened to Hal Jordan. Right. You want to show him as, you want to show him a different it, light than then because Hal Jordan has a as a, the way we're used to seeing him carry himself and the image of him is always sort of this heroic. Even when he is parallax sometimes. Again, the art is beautiful, but sometimes he looks Still very heroic, very regal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to show him as more of a sickly, disturbed, you know, yeah, it makes more sense. Right, which, again, that's a perfect illustration of what how Jordan has gone through here. Yeah. So now, in contrast to how Jordan, John is forced to confront his feelings on being a dealer of death. Because, again, you know, earlier in this, he almost killed Hawk Girl. And he actually is forced to kill Sinestro late in this movie because Sinestro is on top of him, much like, you know, a callback to when John was in the service and was nearly stabbed. Sinestro is trying to kill him, and John wills his ring to himself, and that mortally wounds Sinestro because it goes through his torso. Right. Again, another disturbing imagery. But... Right. And, and John is very shaken by this. He doesn't want to be an executioner. Which, again, which he should be. Um, um, and again, it echoes and it, it comes full circle with, you know, the, the flashback at the beginning, the PTSD that he's experienced from his wartime, right? So, uh, or his, his service time. Mm -hmm. Time at yeah. war, however you want to phrase it. Yeah. Um, so, so all of that, you know, services the overall story well. Like, it connects... It keeps connecting back to that moment, back to, back to John's play, which is, which is his PTSD, and sort of finding his place in the world, right? Right. So what this movie does is he has to find his place in, in sort of the real world, like everyday life. But now, because he's 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 being given or this ring has chosen him, he now has to find his place among the Green Lanterns. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's that on multiple levels. Yeah, and, and at this point, and that <clears throat> you bring that up, this is the point to where he looks at the legacy of the Green Lantern Corps and says, it does mean something. I do, I do want this. And now, you know, we, we see that there's a literal battle of wills between John and Hal Jordan. And John, and I, I did like the battle, by the way. Oh, it was a great battle. I thought it was really cool. John's able to will nine of the ten rings to his own hands and then overpower Hal Jordan. And I, I, I did like this idea that, that John flipping that switch and understanding that this is something that is a necessity basically, you know, for a lot of people to survive, yeah. showing how indomitable his will could be. I like that he was able to turn the tables on Hal, not by just outsmarting him or using tricks, but that he was able to outwill oh, yeah. him. It's a, it's a test of will, for sure. Yeah. So, and he also, once again, I'll, I'll say too, you know, we talked about how he had to confront, you know, killing Sinestro. He had the opportunity to kill Hal Jordan. And he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. You know, I don't want to descend to the level that you've fallen to because we see how Jordan kills several people emotionlessly in this. Yeah. Which, when he's infected by parallax, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, John having to make the distinction, well, with, okay, I was, it was self-defense against an astro. But if, if I, when I have him, when I have Hal Jordan beat, if I kill him now, that's essentially murder. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. right? And so, I want to say earlier in the film, and this just popped into my head. <laughs> I really like the comedic moment when the uh, uh, John's on Oa, and he learns that Hal Jordan is referred to as the greatest Green Lantern in the universe. And John's like, "In the universe? <laughs> really? It was like, it was like all, uh, out of all the lanterns." 
I think but, that's funny because it's like a commentary <laughs> on Lantern fans in general. Like, like each one of them is going to push back. Like each fan of different characters is going to push back on that because they want their guy to be the greatest the, the Lantern. In the, right. So at the end of the day, that's why I say it's best to just find something you love about each one of these guys. Well, you may have your favorite, but if you can, if you can have the perspective of they're all great in their own way, it makes makes life as a fan a lot easier. So the resolution is a little bit of a mixed bag. Now I I get what they were going for, but Oliver shoots Hal with an arrow from behind because Hal ends up on top of John. Everybody's on top of John trying to kill John in this movie. But at this point, Hal still has the parallax entity within him. And he also has a Green Lantern ring. He has it like on his thumb, if I remember correctly. So I get that they wanted Oliver to be the one to kill Hal Jordan, to save John's life, to make that hard decision. But at this point, Hal Jordan's power level still should have been so much that the arrow wouldn't have affected him that much. But that is what happens. Oliver kills Hal. Obviously very disturbed to have to do that. But he saves Jon Stewart's life. Right. And this is why I say that I really would have preferred the Flash here because it would have made a lot more sense of, you know, the Flash attacks. Maybe he can overcome Parallax, but not an arrow. Yeah, that, that was a little bit... Uh, that's yeah. a, weak, a weak way for somebody infected by Parallax to go out. Yeah. So John and Oliver return to Earth, and they strike up a friendship. I really did like the. Emotion. I do like how their friendship develops because it yeah. still has that. It has that hard traveling heroes kind of flavor, mm -hmm. but you know, different because this is dealing with something on a larger scale, and it's John, not how also they had to kind of make it different, and. This is yet another place where, you know, this doesn't resemble Emerald Twilight because, you know, uh, Kyle Rayner was the only last Green Lantern after Emerald Twilight. You know, he was the torchbearer. John immediately says, I need to go rebuild the core. Right. And so. With his military ahead. background, he should be the one to do it. It makes sense. Yeah. That he's the one to do it. And. For Kyle fans and fans of Jessica, Joe Mullane, Guy Gardner, this could be their opportunity to enter the Tomorrowverse. Yeah. If we get a sequel to this, and I certainly hope we do, I think it's good enough to get a sequel. If we get a sequel, we could see those Lanterns being the, the core that John recruits. Certainly, yeah. By the way, if you get the Blu-ray, there is a featurette called The Power and the Glory. And it's not about Paul Roman Hercules. It's actually about... <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> it's, a, it's really about, uh, you know, Jon Stewart's character and his evolution. And they even mentioned the Mosaic title, which, you know, we've talked about that here before, why DC rarely mentions that. But it's still an important part of john's history regardless of what the writer did away from you know being a comic book writer it's still something that's part of john's history which is why i think that both this and the jeff thorne run are important to put the spotlight uh, oh. back on john a little bit yeah and make it a positive yeah uh, situation whereas if people you know remember the mosaic story like because of what what the writer did right you know, it's sort of tainted. Even though, as fans, would like to say, yeah, we can separate, you know, the art from the artist kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But for me, it depends on what the artist yeah. Is, yeah, that has done or is accused of doing. Yeah, usually I can, but in this case, I, I fully understand why DC tried to distance distance right, themselves right, right, right. from yeah. what he did. Right. But now we have Jeff Thorne picking up some of those, you know, some of those old threads and making yeah. this run. And we have Beware My Power. I, I thought, yeah, I thought both of these these two titles, like even though there's some flaws in, in this movie, 
I think that and Jeff Thorne's run has really elevated to John Stewart to a status where you understand why he is part of this mythology. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think he stands at the same level as all you know the ones before him. And it should be an example for the ones that came after him. And, and like you know, I, I joke about when, when, when I came into Green Lantern, it was because of the Justice League animated series. Like that's my that was my first interaction. And don't get me wrong, John was cool in that and I liked him. But it's like my when somebody would mention Green Lantern to me, it would always be, Oh, you mean the guy with the ring from the cartoon? Like that was my initial response. Mm -hmm. Now, all these these different examples that you that you listed have really enforced why John Stewart not only deserves a place in the Green Lantern Corps and in that mythology, but why he can he can be on the Justice League roster and why he is on that level with those other heroes. Like he belongs. Yes. And, and he is an elite. You know, he's an A-lister. He's not the Miz, but, you know. <laughs> close, right? Right. <laughs> so, yeah, ultimately, I'm going to say I was very satisfied with this, even with my issues. Yeah. yeah. I like the way, again, I like the visuals. I yeah. ultimately liked where it ended and what happened along the way. And I also want to point out, we don't know all of the rules of the Tomorrow Verse yet. Yeah, we don't know. Movies in? Where, where? Yeah, two movies. I don't think I don't think there was a third one. I could be wrong. Uh, about it was Man of, It was Man of Tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, Long Halloween, which I count as one, even though it's two parts. Okay, is that part of the Tomorrow Verse? Yeah, I, yeah it I, is. Okay. Yeah. I need and to go back and watch and that. And JSA. And the JSA, okay. JSA movie. The one uh, yeah. World War... JSA World War was it? World War II? World mm -hmm. War III? Whatever it was called. But I want to say that there is a chance that the Hal Jordan we saw that became Parallax may not be the Hal Jordan that Oliver remembers. There's always a chance that they could bring you know, uh, Hal Jordan back and say, oh, this old Hal Jordan is not the one that the Zeta Beam brought back yeah folks it's comic book mythology anything can happen right people come back from the dead right so right. we're dealing with fiction in, in the hands of a good writer anything is possible right so and again who knows even if that was how jordan the proper bona fide article as I said earlier, there's nothing preventing the studio from saying, okay, that's in the Tomorrowverse, but we're going to create a standalone couple of movies that does the Jeff Johns run or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, so let, let's, again, it may not, I understand if it wasn't your cup of tea because there were parts of the movie you didn't like or whatever, that's fine. But if your main gripe is, oh, it's not how Jordan in the lead or. Oh, they took me, they mixed and matched storylines. Yeah. Get over it. That's what Hollywood does yeah. with superhero movies. Yeah. And like I said, it should have been obvious from the trailer that they were going to do something like that. Yeah. And, and I thought overall, the story was, it was, I think it was, like you mentioned, we, we, we said before, ultimately they, they made a relatively cohesive narrative that made sense for the most part. Yeah. I thought it was, it sh you know, for if you're a newbie Green Lantern fan, I think there, there's enough of an entry point there, and it gave you enough of the basics to, to get in on the ground floor. And I thought it really, there was a character journey for John where, again, it wasn't like he got the ring and like, oh, cool, yeah, let's go, right? It, you know, it took him three quarters of the film to finally accept the mantle and say, okay, I'm part of this now. Mm-hmm. So overall, I thought, I thought it was it was really fun, really solid. So, is there anything else, or are you want to go ahead and read it? 
No, the only other thing I want to say, and just like on you know the video that I made on my channel, Miss Darlene gifted me a digital copy of this before I was able to get the Blu-ray, and so that helped me get a jump on on uh, reviewing this. So Look at you with your connections. Yeah, thank you once again, Miss Darlene. We're going to get you back on the podcast soon. Yes, so. sir. Yes, indeed, we will. Uh, we had plans, unfortunately. Uh, she was under the weather. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, hopefully she's on the mend, and we'll schedule something uh, real soon. Um, so B plus is my rating, by the way. I think it they did a lot more positive than negative. Yeah, for me it's a B plus as well. I mean, I have pretty much the same issues you did. Like certain things just didn't make sense mm -hmm. with the ring and what. And should it be doing that? Should it be doing this? Um. But overall, I, I, I had a fun time. It was another uh, piece of lantern uh, media for me to enjoy, which is, you know, in that area of the universe is not as plentiful as, as my Batman and Superman uh, side of my fandom is. So whenever I get to see more lantern stuff, it's cool. Uh, I'm not just waiting around for Batman or Superman. I, I, like, I like having Green Lantern content, I like having Flash content. I like that the JSA is going to be in a movie and I don't care whether Superman shows up in a post credit scene or not. Like, I really don't. If he's there, cool. If he's not, I'm watching a Black Adam movie with the JSA. You know, right. so, so like, like you know, it's, it's, it's great whenever there's another piece of media and nothing is ever going to please everybody anyway. So the way I look at it is if it pleased me and I had a fun time watching and reading it, that's all I needed to do. And this did that in a more than sufficient manner. So it's also a B plus for me. Uh, but that brings us uh, uh, to the end of the show for this week. But if you want to talk more Lantern with either of us, you can on social media. So Donnie, where can they find your uh, Emerald Light Shining? You can find me on Twitter or TikTok as the Emerald Enthusiast. Let's let's talk collectibles. Let's talk comics. Let's talk Green Lantern. And if you want to track me down, it's at Adam underscore Leafs fan on Twitter. The podcast network also has its own page at MMNPDC. Uh, we have a Facebook group, which is listed in the link below. Click that. I will add you. Uh, and we can continue the conversation there, if you so choose. But until next time, remember that John Stewart in Green Lantern, Beware My Power, is forever. From the first time he says the oath to the last. So long. So long, everyone.